Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, or whatever time it may be in your part of the world. My name is Mr. John Wayne, and I am a variety gamer. I play everything from the Fallout franchise all the way to the Soulsborne series. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of my Elden Ring walkthrough. I hope everybody's doing well. I know that I am. And today, we are going to be making our way to the Ravine Veiled Village. But before we do, like always, let's talk about everything I did off screen. And I did nothing except for one thing, and that is switch my fire arrows to poison bone arrows. We're going to be needing those a little later into the episode, but not just yet. Also, I made sure that it was late day or dusk, whichever you want to call it. And the reason why is because we're going to be making our way over here to jump on top of the wandering mausoleum. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. We'll hop on Torrent. And we want to hop on this tombstone that's jutting out of the side of the cliff here this one right here and then right next to it this one right here be really careful not to fall i have done it multiple times where i fell you want to inch off you might not even want to be on torrent um, just to be safe so what we're going to do is we're going to hop back on torrent one more time and it's going to take it a while to get all the way over here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the video, and when we come back, the Wandering Mausoleum will be closer to us. So I'll see everybody in just a minute. All right, and we are back. The Wandering Mausoleum is almost to us. It will get pretty much right underneath us being on this tombstone. Now, just to give everybody a heads up, when we jump off of here we will take a little bit of fall damage and also the reason we're at late day and we're not doing this at night or in the morning is because the wandering mausoleum sleeps at night and is going to be way too far away for us to jump on in the morning so do this during the late day now we can jump on here safely just a little bit of fall damage no big deal. Loud bell ringing in my ear. Gotta love it. Just about done getting all the skulls off of here. Now, if you are parallel to the side of the wall here, when it comes down, it won't kick you off. It'll just kick you backwards and you'll still be on the wandering mausoleum just like that so this mausoleum you can duplicate the boss remembrance of godric here so if anybody wants to duplicate duplicate that you can do that right here for now we're going to go back up to the east rea lucaria gate i'll see everybody there we're going to sit at this grace so we're going to pass time and the reason why is because we don't want to fight a night boss and there is a night boss over here so Oh, before we get started, let's actually mark some stuff out. We want to put a marker down right about here. A marker down right about, I would say, here. Marker down right about here. Here. And then lastly, up top there. Now we're going to follow this road down. There is a cuckoo knight on a horse that patrols this area. 
but we'll just sneak past him by going right here and following this path. If you want, you can turn on your lantern as well. That way it's a little easier to see. Over here by this statue of Radagon, we can pick up the sacred tier and light this grace. If you want to use the sacred tier now, you can. I'm not going to bother with it. We're actually going to go down through this corridor and we're going to head over to a merchant and get ourselves a warrior cookbook. What do you need? I don't want any trouble. So here's the Nomadic Warriors Cookbook 13. We don't have 12 yet, but that's okay. Also, he sells some ruin arcs, some white cured meat that will boost different um, stuff like your immunity, your robustness, and your focus. There's also some bewitching branches you can buy here as well which if you don't remember or you didn't hear me when I talked about them before, if you use those on an enemy, they will frenzy that enemy to attack their allies. So pretty cool stuff. You can also use them on bosses. So if you're fighting multiple bosses at the same time, you can use a bewitching branch to have them fight each other. Pretty cool stuff. Uh, this shield looks really dope. I like it. Um, it's kind of tied into the frenzied flame stuff. I don't know all of the lore on it, but it does look really cool. Um, also we have a composite bow and some arrows and bolts. So if you're low on arrows or just want a new bow, you can get that here and that's all he sells. So let's continue on. All done? Well, be on your way then. We're going to hop on Torrent and we're just going to backtrack back up to the Grace. And we're going to hug the side of this cliff here because there's going to be several trebuchets throwing boulders at us. So you want to be very careful. They won't start throwing them at us just yet. But as soon as we start heading east, southeast, that's when they're going to throw them at us. Right here, we're going to pick up a rune arc. Get rid of that marker. And what I like to do is I like to run as fast as I can on Torrent and stay right here by these palisades. It helps block the boulders and gives you a chance to get by without being hit. Now, if you get hit, just hop back on Torrent and try to haul butt past them. Over here on this corpse, we got another rune arc. We're going to follow the edge of this cliff and it's going to come down so that we can go up. We're just going to stay up top here. This will get us around the trebuchets so we don't get hit by boulders. We can fall down right here. And then over there, you can see a cuckoo knight on a horse. We're actually going to take him out. He's not too bad. As long as you can get the first hit, you can stagger him if you have a heavy weapon. Kind of like we do. Get a critical on him. That'll take him out. Just be careful. Enemies are going to sneak up behind you and try to hit you while taking out that cuckoo knight. Short sword. Sweet, we got a Cuckoo Great Shield. I'll have to show that off um, in the next episode. Also, if you have any plans of going back down that path, take out the guys over here. They're the ones that are using the trebuchets to throw boulders at us. We have a Cuckoo Soldier. Got a Smithing Stone 1. Not really useful to us, but it's okay. Still pick it up. The great mace here for any of you strength builds. That's a pretty cool mace. Does some good damage. 
We are a quality build, so we're not going to use that. We are working on our strength and dex. And then if we come behind this palisade just here, we can get ourselves some cuckoo glint stones. And then we're going to backtrack out of there. Come up to the road and head to the fifth marker. Now, if you stay to the left of the road, we'll be able to pick up some dragon wound grease. And that's going to come in handy later on into the walkthrough. We're going to be fighting quite a few dragons. Get rid of that marker. And then we can touch this grace. Go ahead and light it. And then we'll go to our map. And I guess we didn't take that marker off. Oopsie poopsie. We're going to put a marker right here on this tower. This tower is kind of like um, Lord of the Rings reference with Sauron, the Eye of Sauron and stuff like that. Uh, pretty cool stuff. I'll actually show you what the eye looks like. And I'm sure everybody will get a kick out of that. And then our second marker we're going to put right about here. Our third one we'll put right down here. And then the fourth one we will put right there. Let's go ahead and hop back on Torrent. Just ride up top here. Now this eye, this frenzied eye, is going to have the mad madness uh, meter build up for us. So try to get through here as fast as you can. There are three items that we're going to grab. We're going to grab them pretty quickly. Some smithing stones, a yellow ember, and then golden ruin three. So if you stay close to the edge of this cliff, it cannot see you. You'll be just fine. Take that, pick that up there. And then we're gonna come up here. Now be really careful. There are some rats over here. Try to take out the big one first. Try not to get hit like me. That was close. There we go. Took care of him. Now we're just going to chill here for a minute. Kind of let the, our meter deplete just a bit if you let this meter fill all the way up and you actually get madness it's going to take off a huge chunk of health and that is no fun so we're going to get ready to climb this we'll actually start climbing it in just a second there there we go we can start climbing up by the time we get up to the top, it'll be gone, and we can take out the six guys that are summoning up the eye. And now it'll be gone for good. So even if you rest at the grace, fast travel, whatever, die, that eye will no longer respawn, and you can tra traverse here with no problem. So now let's go to marker two. Also, we did pick up a spell there. I forgot to talk about it because I was so focused on the eye. That is a faith spell. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, a lot of the faith spells with uh, the madness and frenzied flame are kind of PvP based because you can't cause madness on any of the enemies. You can only cause madness in PvP. So it's kind of a lost opportunity on FromSoft's part. 
Hopefully in the DLC that's coming up, we'll get some more uses to the Frenzy Flamed um, skills and spells and stuff like that. I'm sure they'll do something with it. But real quick, we picked up a note, the Lord of Frenzy Flame, and that's going to give us a hint on how to complete the ending for the Frenzied Flame. Now, I will show all of that stuff off once we get to the end of the walkthrough. Be very careful for those guys. If they hold their face, just back away. Um, they're going to do an AoE that shoots out a bunch of, like, flames that will have the madness uh, meter build up on you and, and also damage you as well. So just be really careful. It doesn't go far, but it does hurt. We get the frenzied cookbook. And then over here we have five soldiers. And these guys can do quite a few moves. They can hold their face, do the same thing as uh, the lower guys, the peasants, I guess they're called. Um, they can also throw glintstone shards at you and because they're, they're cuckoo knights or cuckoo soldiers, not knights. I'm sorry. So that's part of their stick is being able to use the academy magic because they're from the Rhea Lucaria Academy. He was actually about to... Oh, where'd, where'd that guy come from? He snuck up on us. Good thing we uh, saw him. We're just going to take these guys out one by one. As long as you're not too close and you shoot an arrow at them, only one will come over, which is nice. He's trying to do his frenzied stuff, which I don't know why he decided to do it way over there. That doesn't make sense, bud. Put his shield up. Well, you know what? Oh, that's what. <laughs> I got too cocky there. Take out this last guy. And then we'll pick up the Shrubberies. Whoa. That is a talisman. For those of you that are doing faith builds and stuff with uh, madness, that'll uh, help you out. We're not doing that. So if you want to check out that talisman, go ahead and uh, look at the description. Now up here, we're about to be invaded by an NPC. This NPC's name is Vike. And a little fun fact about Vike is he is the knight that is all over the promotional art cover of Elden Ring. He was actually supposed to take on the mantle of being Elden Lord before he didn't and decided to join the frenzied flame stuff. Oh my goodness, that is such a dangerous attack. If he does that, just run, just run. Don't even bother trying to um, hit him whenever he does that because it's just going to hurt. Get that backstab. Take him out. Farewell, Vike. Good show, good sir. Good show. So he's going to drop us the fingerprint grape, which we will use later on into Hyetta's quest line to have her segue into becoming a finger maiden but that's a little further off he's also going to drop vike's war spear pretty cool spear to have for pvp it does have madness build up uh, but also if you're doing like a faith dex build or even just a dex build it's a good spear to have pretty cool looks pretty cool as well everybody's seen it that's the spear that vike was using we're going to light this grace. We're going to pick up some more sacred tears. And 
And then we're going to pick up the Finger Maiden set. And we'll reset this grace real quick. We're going to upgrade our flask. There we go. And then we'll go into the map. And we have a few things that we want to do. We want to put a marker about right here. That's going to be our first marker. And then our second marker is going to be down here. Third marker is going to be over here. And then lastly, I forgot to get a scarab that was over here. So we're going to have that as our last stop up top here. And this will be finished off. Now I know that there's a tower over here. We can't do that right yet. We actually have to get through the main dungeon here in Liurnia, which is way in the center here. We got to get through the Rhea Lucaria um, Academy. And we're just not there yet. So we'll come back and we will get that tower done later on, much later into the walkthrough. For now, we're going to come down here. We're going to get a golden scarab to get another spell for all the people playing as a faith build. Some more frenzied stuff. This, this place is just full of frenzied uh, flame spells and all that kind of stuff. Spells and, and weapons. It's kind of the main spot, main hub of all the frenzied flame lore. Over here, what I like to do is get over here by this plant. I like to get all of the golden runes by him first because he will spew out toxin that will have madness fill up. And it's just easier to get all the runes over here. That way, if he spews it out, doesn't matter. It's not going to reach us. We can just pick things up freely. Okay, so we got all the runes. Let's backtrack the way we came. Let's follow this path up. Be careful of the rats. I wouldn't bother with them. We're just going to hop over here on top of this wall. And we're going to pick ourselves up a stone sword key. This is the wall up here on top of the village over here. Which, what is this village called? Frenzied Flame Village. Makes sense. Makes sense. So down here we have one big rat and three small ones. You don't have to do this part. It's just going to be some crafting material. But if you do, aim for the big rat first. Aim for the big rat first. Don't get caught up with the small rats. They do do damage to small rats, but the big rat is where... You're going to take most of the damage. And then, yep, three eyes of Yol. So, if you don't care about that, I wouldn't bother. Over here, we're going to hop down. We will take some fall damage, but if you hop down just here, you won't die. If you hop down, I believe it's a little further over here, you will die. It's too high of a fall. So, just hop down right where I did. We'll drink a flask. Right in here, these bushes. We're going to see that we can lock onto something. That's the silver scarab. And that's going to give us a somber smithing stone too. Now let's go to our map. We're going to come down here. Over to the East Rhea Lucaria Gate. We're going to fast travel. I'll see everybody over there in just a minute. Let's go ahead and go into our map. What we're going to do is we're actually going to hop down right over here by the Spirit Spring. We're going to grab an item off a corpse in a chair. And then make our way over here for a Silver Scarab and a Grace. And then we're going to come around this Mage Tower. We're going to take out some land squirts over here. 
and then we're going to take out uh, nothing over here because there, there's going to be some sleep grease over there. We're just going to grab it and run. And then there'll be a grace over here. And then lastly, we're going to come over here to the veil or no ravine veiled village. I'm sorry. It's not the veiled ravine village. That doesn't make sense. <laughs> ravine veiled village. And I don't think we'll end there. I think we'll end over here by this grace. So I'll quit talking. We'll hop on torrent. Start making our way. To our destination so where we want to drop off is over here by the wall you can see this rock kind of jetting out if you come over here and you hop off you'll see the spirit spring you'll have just enough room to get over here and not take fall damage and fall to your death so right here this is the item that I was talking about with uh, the guy that's dead in the chair. We're going to pull out our bow. We're going to do some sniping here for just a bit. The silver scarab is just right here, but I want to get on the other side of it. It's a little easier to shoot it from this angle. This is going to give us the Ash of War Shield Bash. This is a really cool Ash of War for anybody that's using a shield, like a big shield. Smaller shields, I don't think uh, that Ash can go on there, but it may. But I feel like it was really made for bigger shields. So we lit the grace. We're going to head towards this tower over here just be very careful there's these lobster boys over there don't want to get their attention but I do want to get the item that is in here so those smithing stone two there's three of them now we don't have to worry about going over there anymore we're still by the tower, by the way. Just stay on the kind of edge of the grass line here. We're just going to pop these balloons. It's going to give us a, a golden rune six each time. There is a grace over there. I'm not going to bother getting it. We'll most likely be getting that grace in the next episode. And then we have one more balloon to get. There we go. And then over there are some albinorics. I would not go over there to kill the land squirts or else you're going to be dealing with albinorix and the land squirts all at the same time. And it's just really obnoxious. So real quick, what we're going to do is lock on to one of the land squirts and we're going to shoot four poison arrows at them. And that will cause it to explode. Like it'll get overwhelmed with poison. And it'll build up and then it'll explode and it'll cause a chain reaction so that all of these guys will explode and you don't have to deal with any of them. Also, we can put our sword back on. We have concluded the sniping portion of this episode. Just kind of keep walking until... They're done exploding and the poison mist is gone. So you get two old fangs from that. If you don't care about getting crafting material, you can skip over that section. Over here, we're going to have a crab, a really big crab that pops out. So what I would advise is just grab this item and keep moving. This is the sleep grease that I was talking about. I can't pronounce the name. So I just call it sleep grease because that's what it does. Puts enemies to sleep. 
And then over here, we're going to have a grace. Oh, man, I was almost spot on, huh? We're going to continue down this way over here with these bigger land squirts. You can use the same strategy as I did with the smaller ones to shoot them with poison arrows and they will explode as well. I think you need a lot more than four poison arrows to do that though. Over here, we see an Ur tree sprout. Grab ourselves a golden seed. Try not to walk into the poison like me. We're going to turn on our lantern. It's a little dark over here. Right here, we'll grab ourselves a smithing stone five. Good stuff. Let's light the grace. And then real quick, before we fast travel because we're going to fast travel. I'm not going to run all the way back to that uh, grace. There is a silver scarab over there, but be very careful. There's a bunch of bats that are going to attack us as we get over here to take out the silver scarab. So take that out and then run. We get the Ash of War Barbaric Roar. And then if we sit at this grace, it'll reset all the enemies and we don't have to worry about the bats anymore. Let's get rid of this marker and then I will meet everybody back at the ravine grace. I'll see everybody there. All right, everyone. I want to start by telling everybody Thank you so very much for stopping by. It really, really does mean the world to me. Hopefully you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit the thumbs up button. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down button. Let me know why down in the comments below. It only helps the channel. Also, if you enjoy content just like this, be sure to subscribe or don't. I don't know. I'm not your dad. Do whatever you want. And like always, everybody, have a good morning a good afternoon, or good night, whatever time it may be in your part of the world, Mr. John Wayne, signing off.